It is February 12th, Monday, a special birthday edition of a strategy video. I don't really have a name for it. Live before the lock rolls off the tongue so much easier. But either way, happy birthday to this guy. Um, what do we got tonight? We've got six games, which I think is sort of the perfect slate. It would be great if it wasn't uh, Warrior Suns at 10.30. Um because the Warriors could probably leave Durant, Curry, Draymond, I don't think he's playing, Clay, leave them all at home. They could take the day off. It's not going to take much to take out the Suns. Now that I say that, I'm sure the Suns are going to beat the Warriors by 20 or something stupid. Anyway, uh, I didn't play at all this weekend, so this is my fresh look and diving back in to the world of DFS. We'll be going live tonight. Um to do a fun little live birthday show. So that'll start probably around six, maybe a little early, but come tune in for that. Otherwise, let's get started. First game up is uh, Pistons hosting the Pelicans. Pistons 111.5 implied total is third on the slate and they are uh, three point favorites at home. So, let's take a look. That's Denver, so that's not at all who I want to see. Haha, <laughs> there it is. Never fails. The problem is I refresh it, and then I save the file, close it, and open it back up again before I start, and then I forget to refresh it again. So, what are you going to do? Um, man, Drummond looks pretty good. 10-8 FanDuel, 10-1 DK. Looking 55. I have no reason to uh, to not like that. I'd say he's a three for me. Um, probably the same for Blake. 9,200 on FanDuel, 9,500 on DK. That's not my favorite salary in the world. Uh, needs 45. He's been so steady, just like at that 40 number. But he should roast Miritich. I think I like Blake more than Drummond, but I do like them both. Uh, not the best there. You know, Pelicans D isn't horrible. Reggie Bullock, 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Man, it's crazy. Look at the Pelicans shooting profile. 14, 13, 19, 17, 22, 16, 17. It's all just smack dab in the middle of the pack. Some shade of shade of yellow here. It's hard to get an idea of who is really interesting. Pelicans D is just neutral. Pistons don't do anything of value that's like crazy. I don't know. Tough game to parse out. Bullock needs 25. Uh, it's pretty steady there. Got up to 33. It seems to be the, the cap for him, though. I'm going to go to a 4 for Bullock. Stanley Johnson on FanDuel at 5,900 is unplayable. At 4,800, you can, you can get there, I guess. Why am I typing DraftKings? <laughs> It just never ends. Stanley Johnson's a four on DraftKings. Last guy I would want to look at would be Ish. Um, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. You need 30. Had a terrible game um, last night. Put up seven and a half in 30 minutes. I like him on the surface, but I can't go too crazy. I'd say that I like Drummond and Blake the most, obviously. And, uh, yeah, I would prefer Blake. So we'll go to the Pelicans. Okay, now this one's going to be a little bit more interesting. Although, the Pistons defense, I'm going to need to take a, a closer look and see if they give up less threes after the Blake trade. Um... AD 11-7 on FanDuel, 11-4 on DK. I 
obviously uh, AD with the monster two nights ago. Um, can he follow that up? Overtime obviously has something to do with that, but still a monster game. I mean, I like it a little bit. I think I would prefer the Pistons side of this than, than AD at least. He's still a three. And I honestly, th I think that I would prefer the Pistons, the like the Drummond and Griffin piece to AD. I don't know why. I don't know. I just don't feel like this one totally fits him. Like he can have a good game, but not necessarily an exceptional fantasy game. I might have to dig into that a little bit more. Drew Holiday, uh, 7,600 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. I really like it for Drew. Um, he's a three. I just sort of like this game a lot. Um, Etan Moore. I think he probably gets the biggest benefit. Well, maybe not. It's probably Drew and Miritich. Yeah, I'm gonna. I like Miritich a lot here. Miritich with uh, 60 two nights ago. Um, he's a two for me. 7,000 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. Uh, this is a perfect matchup for him. I love it. Etan Moore's a three, by the way. Really like the Pelican side of this game. Rondo. I mean, it's all about minutes with Rondo. You, if you get 21-minute Rondo, you're not happy. If you get 30-minute Rondo, you are. Um, he's GPP only. 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Um, I'm going to say he's a four. <sighs> I don't necessarily trust the minutes, and the biggest benefit of playing the Pistons is being able to get up some extra threes, which is not exactly what you're hoping for out of Rondo. So I don't think that he benefits in the same way. Yeah, that's it for me. We'll go to the Sixers. Uh, Sixers hosting the Knicks. 110.75 implied total is fourth. They are 12-point uh, favorites at home, which is monstrous, but that's what happens when uh, Porzingis isn't healthy, which is such a shame, too. Um, Philly's middle of the pack for matchup. Obviously, Golden State has by far the best matchup, and then uh, after that, it's Clippers in Orlando. Bulls and Magic playing. Did they? Didn't they play like ten seconds ago? Nope. I feel like the Bulls and the Magic have played a hundred times this year, and apparently they haven't played at all. <laughs> that way, is that just Le no? That can't just be Levine, can it? Ah, uh... oh, they played once. Maybe. I can't figure it out. It's not important. All right. Ooh, this will be interesting. Philly really good at getting to the line. Knicks not so much. Ben Simmons is 9,000 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. I don't like that his price is climbing. Back up to nine after being down to like 8,500. I mean, it's a great spot for him. What's he going to get? Beasley? <laughs> Give me a break. Ugh, gotta like it a little bit at least. Needs 45. Hasn't had like this monstrous game where he just goes off. Uh, I can only say that he's a three because I just. so hard for me to get there with him because of the lack of like the ability to shoot <laughs> take zero percent of his shots from three such a weird player in this day and age i feel like he'd be good with i don't know like pat beverly as his point guard anyway yeah he's just a three i just uh, he's really safe i think but 
I'm slowly but surely not seeing the same upside. Now the Knicks could bring that out of him. They're not a very good basketball team right now, but it might not be the place where I want to make my bed tonight. Saric, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. He would need 35. Again, like steady at that price, but not someone that's just going to blow the doors off. If he got to the line a little bit more, I'd be a little bit more excited for him here. Um, I'm going to say Saric is also a three. I don't, I'm not really getting a good like GPP vibe out of them. Bobby Covington, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DraftKings. He needs 28. Got there once, one big game at 37. He just hasn't been himself. Um... Yeah, again, I, you're betting on a hot hand for this one, so I'm going to say he's a 4. Embiid, though, 10-7 on FanDuel, 10-2 on DK. You're looking 55-ish. Put up 62 nights ago. He had 50 uh, Friday night. 53 in the game before that. Has been on a little bit of a heater. Um, obviously should just do whatever he wants to... Cantor, if Cantor's playing. Kylo Quinn, uh, a little bit better defensively, but I really like Embiid. That's man, it's gonna be a tough it's gonna be a toss up between Embiid and Drummond tonight. I'm gonna reserve judgment until I get through it. Because if I see a value center, it might not matter. Embiid's a three. He's pretty close to a two. JJ, I'm not interested in. TJ McConnell, I'm not interested in. Justin Anderson, not interested. So let's go to the Knicks. Knicks, uh, 98.75 implied total. Dead last on the day. Um, Philly been has been exceptional on D. This is not a great matchup. So if you want to take somebody from the Knicks, you really want to be taking someone that either has crazy upside for a GPP or is just an overwhelming value because of a price quirk. Otherwise, this is not a good spot. Or at least it's not, it shouldn't be. Tim Hardaway is 5,700 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. So if we can get him to 30, we would be uh, happy campers. Has not been at 30 points in two weeks at least. Probably some kind of crazy, this would be an amazing game for him. I'm going to say he's a four. God, this is a terrible matchup. Beasley, 6,500 on FanDuel. 6,800 on DK. I mean, that price on FanDuel is exceptional. I'm surprised it's not higher. That's crazy. He needs 32. 36 in the last game, 41 in the previous. Yeah, I'm I love Beasley here. Uh it's a two for me on FanDuel. Three for me on DK. I just He's just gonna shoot. Like he's It's all up to Beasley here. Am I crazy? Where are we at? Close. Knicks. No, I'm not crazy. Whether it's projection system or just stats from this year, I mean, he should be, he should have a higher salary than that on Fandle, so, okay. Cantor, 7,000 on Fandle, 7,300 on DK. Not the spot for me. Uh, needs 35. He's a 4, but there's no way I'd end up with him. Courtney Lee, no thank you. Um, Frankie Smokes, minimum salary on FanDuel, 3700 on DK. Um, I haven't had to type this in a while. I get it? 
I'm going to say he's a three. Um, that's probably a aggressive. I'm going to say he's a four. I like him in a GPP. And then uh, Moutier. This one's going to be really interesting to me. I should probably like watch a Moutier game. I haven't seen him play in so long. Had 29 fantasy points last night in 29 minutes. Uh, that's a really solid debut for him. Um, I've got him in for 25 minutes right now. That could potentially change. Uh, him and Nilakina actually were uh, really good from a plus-minus perspective being on the floor at the same time. I'd like to see how they go moving forward. Uh, 3700 for Moutier on FanDuel, 4300 on DK. That's a really good price. That's a great punt. I'm going to say he's a three. It's, it's hard to commit too much to Moutier. But I think that he's going to show up on a decent chunk of my optimizations when I run my 100. And then Kylo Quinn is sort of in a perpetual uh, fourth tier status. Um, just really good, really efficient in the minutes that he does play. Let's go to Brooklyn. Uh, Nets. 107 implied total is 7th. They are 3.5 point underdogs at home against the Clippers. So, not going to like a ton here, if I could guess. Damari Carroll, 5,500 and 5,400. That's actually not half bad. Um, Clippers do give up threes. Needs 27. He's been over that in his last three. Um, yeah, I'd be okay with some Damari Carroll. Spencer Dinwiddie, 7,500 on FanDuel. I don't have any interest in that. I know that he went for 48 and 41. You know, three out of his last five have been into the 40s. He needs to get there. Um, I have a little bit more interest in him on DK, so he's just going to be a, a DK4. I don't really want him on FanDuel, especially in this game. Uh, Alan Crabb, 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Needs 25. High 30s in his past two. Um, yeah, also just a four. I don't really like the matchup. Quincy AC played 40 minutes two nights ago. Uh, only got 21 fantasy points. Um, he's 3,900 on FanDuel, 3,700 on DK. Uh, I'm all over Quincy AC. And by all over, I mean he's a three. But uh, that's a really good price for somebody that should probably get 30 minutes and just bombs threes against a team that gives up a bunch of three opportunities. It's worth a shot. Bet on the hot hand. Hope for the best. Joe Harris is 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. 23 would be your mark. Uh, it's been over 30 in this past two. It does fit a Joe Harris mold for a game. I'll go three. Getting a lot more Brooklyn than I expected. Jared Allen, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Um, not a huge fan. I'm going to pass there entirely. And then D'Angelo Russell, 5,400, would be 27. I uh, played 32 minutes two nights ago. Uh, that might be the the first big ramp up for him. Put up 37 fantasy points. Um, looks like a great spot for him in GPPs if he's going to be able to get some minutes boosts because he's not going to be 5,400 on FanDuel or 5,600 on DK if he's playing 32 minutes. That salary is going to go up. So something to keep an eye on. Um, hmm... He's probably a three. Um, I want to do some research, figure that out a little bit. I mean, I guess overtimes will do that for you, and that's how you get to 32. But the fact that they let him have that run is the, the key tenet. Not just that he got 32 minutes, but that he can play 32 minutes. All right, let's check the Clippers. Clippers, 111.5 implied total is third. 
Um, they are second in my uh, holistic little game ranking metric. Um, they should be able to do whatever they want in the mid range. They get to the line better than any other team. Uh, so, you know, guys that take it to the rack are going to be my focus here. I'm going to want probably two pieces of this, if not more. So, Tobias Harris is first. 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. He's going to need 36, uh, which he hit in his last one. He's hit it twice. Um, it's not the best price. It's going to be hard to extract a ton of value from Tobias Harris, but I'll say that he's a three. Gallo is 6,800 on FanDuel and 6,300 on DK, so you'd be looking for 35-ish. Been there, three out of his five. I like that. Now DeAndre. This is the one I want to pay attention to the most. Obviously, Brooklyn gets roasted against centers. <sighs> this could be a really good coming out party for DeAndre. 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. He needs 40, which he has not hit at all in the past two weeks. Missed an L in Gallinari? Yep. I really like DeAndre tonight, but I'm, I don't think that I'm going to be in the minority there. Uh, still just a three, because I think he's overpriced. I'm surprised he's at 7,800. Did they move it up for this game? They fucking did. So he was down at 7,300 two nights ago and bumped him up 500 more dollars. If he was 7,300, like I know that's just 500 bucks, but that's so dramatic to be able to fit other things in. Um, it should come as no surprise that I love Lou Will tonight. 6,800 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. He needs 35. Um, only 30 in his last one, but hit that 41 number uh, Friday night. Lou Will is a two for me. It's just a it's just a crazy price for a guy that's gonna gun. You know, if he gets hot, he's got fifty plus potential. Mm. Getting a lot of uh, well wishes. Phone's going crazy over here. Austin Rivers. 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Looking for 25. Hit it in both. I'm not the biggest Austin Rivers fan in the world. I've gone over that already. I just like I like him more as like a general basketball player than a fantasy player. He's been decent this year. Um, can't ignore him. Let's say he's a three. I'm going to want at least two pieces of the Clippers and potentially three, depending on how they fit together. I'm anxious to see how they pop out. If I can get, like, DeAndre and let's see who stacks with DeAndre. Well, DeAndre might be in the number one in the uh, best spot. Yep, he is. Number one in the best spots. I try not to look at that before I um, give it my first pass. I don't want to land on... I don't want, don't want to cloud the head first. But I do want to see how DeAndre has been with anybody else on the team. So pretty good so far with Tobias Harris. Decent with Rivers. Not so much with Avery Bradley. And uh, pretty much the opposite of Lou Will, which does not shock me. Uh, Avery Bradley, I guess, is the last piece of the puzzle here. Uh, Bradley, 4,200 on FanDuel. 4,700 on DK. Needs 20 and change. Hasn't really been lighting it up. I'll say he's a four. I'll go to Chicago. Bulls 109.5 implied total is fifth. They are four point favorites at home against the Magic, and they are this game itself. I think is the best game to stack. Not that any, but not that I'm telling anybody any news. Bulls are fourth in my little metric. Uh, Magic are third. Both teams just not very good on D. Um, you know, decent implied total. It's just 
a lot of minutes to be had. Let's check out the Bulls. Uh, expectation is Levine is playing, and then uh, Chris Dunn is questionable right now. So keep an eye on that. If Dunn is out, obviously that bumps up Jerry and Grant. Right now, Jerry and Grant is not in play. So... Is that right? That looks like a weird number for the Magic's shooting defense numbers, that is. Where's Orlando? Yeah. So they give up a ton of above the breaks, but no corner threes. Okay, good to know. All right, so Levine, 8,200 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DraftKings. You're looking for 40 plus on FanDuel, uh, which he did in two of his last three. Uh, sat out on the back to back Saturday night. Um, I mean, there's no reason not to like it. Uh, it that's a high number. I'm going to say that Levine is a straight three, but he's very. I, I like him a lot more on DK at 69. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Chris Dunn, 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Man, I wish more stuff was jumping out at me. It's just, I feel like I make the same lineup all the time. Miritich is a two. Lou Will is a two. I can just run out my whatever lineup I had on Friday night. Um... Let's see, you would need Chris Dunn to get to like 38. Hasn't played in two plus weeks since he broke his face. Um, I mean, he should He'd be in a good spot. Not that Alfred Payton, I guess it was probably better off if Alfred Payton was there, but uh, I'm going to say that he's a three. Both of those guys, um, I think, are going to pop up on the optimizer a lot. It'll be hard to, have, like, I would expect to have one of them. Markinen is 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. It's back up to 30 plus minutes. Um, you know, this should be a game where Markinen can really exert himself. Shoots a ton of threes. Not as many from the corner. He's usually getting them above the break, so I'm interested to see how that shakes out. I'll say Markinen is a three as well. Justin Holiday. Does take a bunch of corner threes. Ooh, typed over marketing. But if Dunn and Levine are back, it's hard to really focus on Holiday at 5,500. Um, so I'm going to say that he's just a four. Bobby Portis, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. He needs 30 plus. Easy. Um, he's probably just a four. It's hard to get there. And uh, Rolo, minutes are up in the 28s for the past two games, which is nice. Still not only getting to like 20 fantasy points, though. I'll say Rolo's a four. Not the worst matchup for him. Um, you know, it's not like the Magic are deep at any particular position, especially with no Aaron Gordon. We'll go to Orlando. Um, great spot for Magic, so let's hope we find something here. 105.5 uh, implied total is 8th. All right, Fournier is up first. He is at 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. So you're looking for at least 33. Has not hit that at all in the past two weeks. Um... Bulls give up a ton of threes. Yeah, I like Fournier here. Again, man, everybody is just so neutral tonight. It's really going to be how the pieces fit together um, to build this lineup out. Because I'm seeing a lot of similar overlap. So, like, I want to see who pops up the most if that corresponds to where I'm at. And when I lock those guys, I want to see where the, the full fit comes. Hmm. Cool. 
All right. Jonathan Simmons, 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. 5,100 on DK, really. All right, so like 28 or so. I mean, he's been not good in everything except for one game, and then on the sixth he went for 48. So can't ignore him. He's GVP only for sure. Um, three as well. DJ Augustin, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. Uh, played less minutes Saturday night, went for 35 minutes, and had a great game Thursday, which is weird that he got such a minutes cut. It's a lot more balanced now. Um, so I'm a, little, I'm a little wary there. So I'm going to say it's a 4. Hazonia, 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. I think this is a good fit for him from a matchup perspective. You're looking for just shy of 30. Uh, put up 33 Saturday night. Put up 29 on Thursday. Um, definitely can get there, and he should be gunning. Uh, so I'm going to say he's a 3. I'd like to have at least two guys from this game, if not three. So it'll be I'm um, intrigued to see how that fills out. The big bummer is that like, I want to have parts of the Warriors, but how do you do that against the Suns at a 10-30 slate? Dude, Steve Kerr can suit up, and I think they would beat him. That dude's got a bad everything right now. Uh, last up, I think, is Shelvin Mack. He is 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. You're looking for 28. He went crazy Saturday night. So it looks like Augustine and Mac flip flop themselves Thursday and Saturday. Um, you know, in general, I like Mac more than I like Augustine, but it's hard to tell with their minutes. I think Mac is a three. I'm going to sneeze. It might not come out though. Played good defense. We're good. All right, two games left. Jazz and Spurs, which is an exceptional game if you want to watch basketball. Uh, not so much if you want to play fantasy. So, Jazz, there's no line on this right now. Um, I've got it at Jazz as one-point favorites at home. Uh, super low total, so this would be the the worst implied total on the on the day, 102.5 for the Jazz, 101.5 for the Spurs. That would be 10th and 11th. So I'm anticipating Ricky Rubio to play. If he doesn't, that obviously uh, makes things look a little bit different. You know, Royce O'Neal really opens up in that case. Um, so Donovan Mitchell is 7,600 on FanDuel and 7,000 on DK. You're looking 38. They played the Spurs at all this year. Wrong position. Oh, they just played him. All right, so Mitchell's missed both of those games, so that's cool. No help whatsoever. <sighs> Put up 37 last night, 39 the night before. Um, I think he's starting to feel his legs again after missing that game on the third. I'm going to say he's a three. Rubio is 8,000 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. I just can't do it. I know he's been hot. Now that he's been out, um, I'm going to avoid Rubio. Uh, he looks... Fe I'm gonna, you know, he, he's feasible on DK. Gobert, 7,700 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Spurs not exactly spectacular against centers. If you're going to get anybody, that's sort of the spot you would want to go. Um, you're looking for like just shy of 40. I uh, put up 40 on Thursday night. Only time he's been above 40 in the past two weeks. Um, I actually sneakily like Gobert here. Um, I feel like that might be a little contrarian tonight. I'll have to look into it. Joe Ingles is 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. You're looking 27. Uh, dude went ham last night. 
um, and Thursday night and a couple nights ago. Uh, Ingles on a little bit of a heater. Not really the best matchup for him. Spurs aren't going to just let him bang open threes. So I'm going to say Ingles is a four. And then finally, last guy I probably want to look at here is Favors. 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. You're looking 27 or so. A big one last night. Can get there. Um, who is out for the Spurs? Why can't I remember the answer to this question? Oh, no Lamarcus Aldridge for the Spurs. So, you know, it could be a little bit more interesting for Gobert and uh, Favors. Mind is not running well. Mondays are tough. Need my special coffee. Go to the Spurs. Spurs 101.5 implied total, as I said, you know. Terrible matchup across the board. Um, it's hard to like much of anything in this game unless you get a uh, price type of play. So Bertans, for example, um, with no Aldridge, should have to play close to 30 minutes. He's 3,900 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. Um, he's a two for me. Uh, you just kind of, you know, He's got the potential to go off, and if he's going to play, you know, he played 30 minutes two nights ago, um, got 25 fantasy points, so that's success, and that doesn't even necessarily have to be a good game. So I'm in for Bertans. Kyle Anderson, 5,300 and 5,200. I never get this Kyle Anderson game right. I never get him when he has 44. I get him when he has fucking 12. Asshole. Uh... Matchup fits for him. I have Murray playing. I think Anderson is just generally better when he can run everything through himself. Um, I'm going to say Anderson is a four, just because I like the, the amount of mid-range shots that he might be able to get. Danny Green, uh, I just don't have any interest in. Now, Powell um, is a little interesting. 5,400 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. You need 27 from him. Um, if he's going to get any sort of chunk of minutes with Aldridge out, it's a really good price. So I'm going to say that it's a three. Murray, 5,100 on FanDuel. 5,500 on DK. Looking 25. If we get word that he's starting, I think he's pretty interesting. But I don't really want anything else here. Let's get to the real game. Warriors and Suns. I don't even know where to begin here. So, it should come as no surprise. The Suns are the worst team um, in basketball. You always want to load up on guys against them. However, when four of those dudes are better than anyone on the Suns, it's tricky. Now, Draymond not expected to play, so... It's possible that Kavon Looney is just the safe bet here, but let's just look at the first four of these guys, and then we'll move forward. So, Clay is 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Suns do give up threes, which I like. Um, you would need Clay to get to like 34, which he doesn't do all that often. I'm going to say that he's a three. Durant, 10-9 on FanDuel, 9-8 on DK. Um, I just... Uh, I'm, they're all threes because one of them is probably going to go off. Uh, I'm inclined to say that I like Curry the most here. 10-2 on FanDuel, 9-9 on DK. He'll have a lot of Alfred Payton, who is on a brand new team. Um, so... I think that it's much more likely for him to get lost. So I, I sort of feel the same way about Clay to an extent, but getting Peyton integrated defensively is probably the more difficult piece of all of this, so I'm hoping that that could lead to Curry just going kind of crazy. But if there's ever a situation where there's a potential blowout, it's this one. Um, I would be very surprised if these guys play in the fourth quarter. 
These are especially if Booker doesn't play. Right now, I have Booker in. If Booker's out, you should expect the Warriors to win by like a million. So, uh, Kavon Lumi is the only guy that I have any real interest in. Uh, and that's just because I expect him to play a bundle. I can't say that he's a two because I don't necessarily trust the Warriors. They play 13 guys a night, so it might not even matter. But I think Looney is in the best spot out of anybody um, to capitalize. Minimum salary on FanDuel, 3200 on DK. He makes for a decent punt, but um, it's really hard to handicap a game like this. It's possible that I end up with like Curry or Clay or Durant just because of the way salaries shake out, but I'm really nervous to take one of them tonight. Although, I think that if they blow them out, you know, those guys are the reason that they get there, so it's all about trying to figure out who's best in that scenario. I'm hoping Curry is the one that pops up the most. Now, for the Suns. Uh, 103 implied total is ninth, you know, monster underdogs. That line is not out. I, you know, I made 15, but it's going to be in that area. Um, so, first up is going to be TJ Warren. Warren is 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. You're looking for 38. Um, you know, there's certainly upside there. But I can't go too nuts here. I'm just going to say he's a four. Alfred Payton, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. I like that a little bit more. I'm going to say that he's a three. You're looking to get to, you know, 38 or so. Put up 36 last night, in his, or two nights ago in his debut. Josh Jackson, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, played 39 minutes two nights ago, put up 50 fantasy points. I'm hoping that if they get blown out, Josh Jackson will continue to get that run. Being a rookie and all, minutes are important to him. But um, I'll say he's a, th a three. Devin Booker, 7,400 on both. What's Booker's history against Golden State? Now, it's possible he doesn't play, but am I in the wrong fucking game or something? Fuck is Devin Booker thirteen thousand? Yeah, this has just been a weird. Anyway, um, nothing crazy. Gunned like crazy last year to close out the season. Still had a shit game. So, well, he's gonna shoot. Um, so if he's playing, he's a four for me. I don't have any interest in Bender. Tyson Chandler, 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. You're looking for 22. No Draymond. Um, I'll say Chandler's a four. And then Marquise Chris, 4,700 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Looking 24 or so. Uh, terrible Saturday night. Better Wednesday. Nope. I don't know, some day last week that I can't remember what the 7th is. Wednesday, I was right the first time. Uh, I'll say Marquise Chris is also a 4. Murky, murky night. I don't... This is going to be... Um, interesting. I didn't get a good vibe of what is going to be popping up here. So, let's find out. I'm kind of anxious because I don't really know where this is going to go. Somebody's going to show up and I'm going to be like, what the funk? Pow. Let's see what we got. Okay, Moody, Lou Williams, Beasley. That's actually all going as I would have expected. So... I'll stick with Lou, and I'll stick with Beasley. I 
feel safe sticking with Moody, eh? I, although I don't want two dudes from the Knicks, so that is a little scary. <sighs> but that price for Beasley is hard to ignore, so let's do that. Let's say that Kavon Looney is not necessarily my first lock there. But let's grab Blake and Bertans. Ooh. So let's ungrab Blake and see what happens if I get Miritich instead. So that's something I could get behind. Peyton, Moutier, Holiday, Lou Will, Beasley, Carroll, Miritich, Bertans, Drummond. Yeah, that would be my first sort of fave here. Um, let's check out DraftKings now. Crazy. <laughs> All right, so we want to see close open. Lou Will, Miritich, and Bertans are going to be the three main guys I expect to see here. Bump the ten. Go a hundred. Mine go. Hardly any bird tans. Well, I'm not surprised. It's not as good of a price on DK. Tons of loony though. 3200 shouldn't be terribly shocking. Definitely going Drummond here then. So let's do loony and Drummond. Miritich. No sign of Lou Will. Not surprising. Um, let's sort by projected. Let's. I already got Drummond. If I grab Bertans, that would be. Mm, I don't necessarily love that. Well, I don't know. Peyton Simmons, Bertans, Miritich, Drummond, Dunn, Looney, Gobert. I can get behind something like that. Yeah. I definitely like Drummond on uh, on DraftKings tonight. If I grab Drummond and Miritich, yeah, you can get to something decent. It's going to be interesting to pay attention to the Bulls with the amount that Chris Dunn is popping off the page here. Um, he could be a key tenant in uh, a DK lineup tonight if he's healthy. But who knows? We shall see. And with that, I am done. Um, like I said, uh, tune in tonight live before lock starting at 6 or potentially a little bit earlier. Um, big birthday version of live before lock. I'm excited to go live. And, uh, you know, check me out on all the normal stuff. My website, Twitter, uh, the DFS, Reddit. Um, you know, like and subscribe the video. And um, I will see you guys tonight. Best of luck.